I became thought-oriented towards army life. This, this was going to be it. Felt that this was your little area and uh, the way you were playing your part uh, wasn't so bad after all. Let's get to it. When we were terribly busy, of course, it was 14 hours one day and 13 and a half hours the next day, seven days a week. You wouldn't believe it. We had men that had lost limbs and uh, they would require a lot of TLC, if you like to put it that way. You know, they like to think that you would do something a little bit of extra special for them. We thought they were very worthy of it. As we staggered along the force march, the remnants from the Aura Creek, Coming along at the rear, just in front of me, was Rowley Looms, one of my mates. Down went Rowley into the water. He couldn't get up, and I couldn't help him. I had the strength. The pack on his back was weighing him down. Some of the boys come along and eventually we got him up. I felt so ashamed that I couldn't rush in and grab him. I wasn't capable of it. There were times when I think that we'd decided We'd had our last glimpse of home. We'd had our last glimpse of Australia. And we were just marching on, on to infinity. I well, well remember some of my own mates that were actually pulled out dead and we, we helped to bury them. We suddenly realised how fearsome, how futile is the real warfare. The work that they did, the compassion that they showed, it was just unbelievable and uh, certainly there's no doubt about it that when things are going bad, when you're under pressure with uh, very little to come and go on, it's then when uh, true mateship seemed to show out. As far as the men were concerned, if they had a, a mate or a person that came in, one of the boys that came in, they seemed to form their mateship very quickly and they'd look after them so well, you wouldn't believe it. The, uh, that's where, you know, they talk about mateship sometimes and I think it's got a hollow sound because in those days it was real mateship. They did anything for each other. When they got home there were some that had lost limbs and there were others who'd lost their minds. We did have men that were more damaged inside. They seemed to be pretending to be the big strong soldiers. They were all quite young and they feared about returning to life and not being as they were and I think that played on their minds a lot. The scars of war mark each one of us in a different way. Some obviously could never settle back into Seve Street remembering that these young men, most of them, 18 and some younger than 18, were thrown into this conflict situation, were finding it terribly hard to adjust, terribly hard to adjust. I think we all have learned a lot and have a great deal to be thankful for being able to learn the lesson of true comradeship, because virtually what one man had, everybody shared and Although I wouldn't like to see any future generations having to go through such an experience, I have no doubt that if they do, they too will learn the value of comradeship really shines through under the most harshest of conditions. Grandchildren saying to their grandfathers, you know, your medals, Dan, Pa, can I have those, you know, later on? <coughs> Can I march with you? Tell me where you were. <laughs>